Hey, how's it? All right, I'm going to pull the emergency parachute going down the tool rabbit hole for a second, slow it down. I do have some great tool coming. I've also got some ginger that I've been checking out and some great uh, rock prog musicians from Norway and Poland and, and everywhere. So hang on. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to do a reaction in a style of music that I'm familiar with. Uh, the band is called Snarky Puppy. The song is called Lingus. This is, a, this is going to be a fairly long uh, reaction because the song itself is kind of long. Um, the reason why I'm really familiar with this style of music is that as a kid, I was brought up in the music industry, as most of you know. My uncle was a co-founder, keyboardist, and writer for a Latin jazz fusion band under Capitol Records called Caldera. And so the roots of who I am even as a composer now stems from that, those kind of polyrhythm, unique changes and, and powerful jazz fusion kind of um, arrangements has affected me in my life in doing what I do, good, better, and different. Uh, let me get my technical stuff together. Let's get this uh, snarky puppy lingus uh, going. I will do the best I can to not stop so many times so we can get into the music and then, you know, and then I might let, leave a clump reaction, but so that you guys have a good time too listening to the music while I'm doing what I'm doing doing so stand by uh, here we go Okay, my first stop, stand by, here we go. Okay, what a crazy funk mothership. <laughs> first thing is that everybody here seems to be having just an amazing time. That is so obvious in the body movement, the funk faces and all the uh, stuff that we got going on here. Okay, something that um, I want to kind of marry in for those of us who don't come from my point of view as a composer or an engineer and we are treated like you folks, a lot of you who just listen to music to enjoy it and love it, to such a deep and rich sound as we're hearing here. Not often do we see three guitarists. It looks like there's like four or five keyboardists, um, one bass player. Uh, I, I hear the percussion and um, I hear multiple arrangements and doubling of arrangements with the keys and stuff. Um, I also hear doubling and have seen, you know, you can see it. That's what's really great about this so far. It's like I'm doing a reaction video of a reaction video. 
uh, because of the people that are inside there who are reacting to it as well as they cut to, but they're also cutting to the fact that when you hear the bass player do his you know, you've got, he cuts to, you can see that the keyboard player is doing it. Sonically, anybody who's tuned into it in your in the cans that are musicians or engineers, you can hear, you know, the mini Moog is going with the bass. Um, the horn section, wow. I mean, that is really tight. I'm sure we're in for a real treat as this moves forward. Um, as an engineer, I uh, want to let you know, in my opinion, it's always just my opinion, but I have done uh, direct to DVD and other projects before. Um, you know, they record this live as is being done, and then they will remix it later. Um, <clears throat> I can't imagine trying to get this great of a sound on the first time fly recorded straight to DVD. It's not impossible, and if the engineers or people who have more um, information about this, please chime in. I do not know everything, I love to learn things. So I don't ever want to misstate something by saying I know, but it, there's probably a good chance that it was remixed, which means that they have the ability to uh, really position and level up that so you have a sonic presentation, hence the song that's being performed. Um, so I'm going to move forward now, try to do a nice big chunk without saying anything, and, uh, and just enjoy this as much as you are. The polyrhythms are really super cool. Uh, if you're listening to this, if you're still here listening to this and you're, um, you know, one of my uh, friends that drop comments from the Tool rabbit hole, as we like to say, in the Tool army, uh, you guys really enjoy the polyrhythms. As a matter of fact, that's, that's the Tool game. Um, I, so far, that's good. I think we're in for a treat. Um, so let me just stop yappering and shouldn't be drinking so much coffee before I do this stuff. Okay, here we go. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring it back a little bit. Stand by. I, I had a few comments that people were saying, hey man, if you're going to make stops, you should drop it back so we can pick up and I try to I know you, you saw me writing notes, it's because I want to try to do these in bigger chunks instead of stopping all the time. Um, okay, first thing is, oh, I'm so glad they cut away uh, to the percussionist. Um, it's probably, everybody here is an equal in a band like this, okay? Uh, but the percussionist uh, very rarely gets a lot of the spotlight. I mean, it's just the way it's been, you know. My dad did arrangements for a percussionist back in the late 50s, a guy named Mazacote, who was a percussionist. So it, it was about him, and the percussions were out in front, and the band was in supporting. But in 99.8% of the time, the percussionist is off next to the drummer, off to the side and stuff, and you know gets love occasionally with a solo. Please, when you listen to this section, that section when it moves forward, listen to how much is going on back there. His support with the percussion. Support, that's the key word, that lent itself to um, this rhythmic ceremonial ritual I like to say, you guys have heard me say that, that is uh, so, so important, so tight. Percussionist, I don't know who you are, I, I see you, I hear you, thank you. <laughs> horn section, you saw me taking notes, okay, um, the horns, when they did their solo, um, for those of you who don't know, and you say, why did the saxophone or the trumpet sound that way, um, 
a lot of times horn players, especially more pop culture, uh, progressive, progressive jazz fusion kind of work, they'll have a stomp pad or stomp pedals like guitar players. They might kick in a phase or a flange or a delay. I believe that's what they did. It could have happened in post. I don't know. Um, so, and the solos, I just can't, I can't say enough about brass solos. Uh, me as a guitar player, um, I like to study um, brass reed musicians for solos. Yeah, there's a whole different reason for that, but I have a very uh, big sweet spot for um, brass and uh, reed um, musicians when they do their solos. One guy I used to always listen to is a guy named Steve Travagoloni, which I'm sure most of you know who he is. He was a genius, or is a genius still alive. And so, anyhow, I, I digress. I'm sorry. I'm just pumped for this. I'm going to go back just a little bit. We're going to st uh, restart it, and I can see if I can get another big fat chunk without having to say anything. So here we go. Stand by uh, the drummer. There we go. Okay, let's try this. <laughs> that piano and a bass locked in with that kick.
Yeah, pretty much. You can see in the background. That's when you're applauding. That's you know an incredible solo and a performance. There's no two ways about it. That solo was just magical. Um, what I loved about the solo, technically, you know, if 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 you are a musician into the level that you can understand what he's doing, how he's doing it, you know, the the intensity um, is undoubtedly phenomenal. His skill. What I loved about it is at the beginning of the solo, the improv god was definitely coming through his soul and his uh, presence the physical him playing was just as wonderful as the playing like he was really just out there looking he wasn't looking at his hands he wasn't um, being drilled down intense about what he was about to start to perform or how he was making the moves um, I know some people have an opinion about this. I am, you know, the super fast playing of all instruments, you know, is definitely a sign of, of many years of skill and training. But the, the arrangement riffing in between it, the things that, that actually require um, polyrhythmic way of playing the solo to me is a lot more pulling to the soul because, you know, when you start doing all the fast runs and stuff like that, you're subjugated to, you know, um, doing uh, arpeggiations and stuff. Those are really nice in doses. Um, but in this case, I loved left-right combo. Are you kidding me? I, I, I can barely play chopsticks with my left hand. And watching this is just intense. The reaction of everybody, let me see, I was writing some stuff down here. The reaction of everybody is a telltale sign. I'm sure you probably responded the same way I did and watching everybody just lose their mind. There's a little section in there where you can see the guys in the control room losing their mind. They're just out of their head. And it looks like they're bouncing around and jumping because they're in the control room and their actions wouldn't be picked up by the live mics that you have going on here, which is another thing that's so cool is to have all these people here um, listening to it in real time. Uh, so I'm going to move on. Did I have anything else? Uh, oh, at the very beginning when I restarted that, when the drummer was holding down those quarter notes... What I love about that, and that is kind of like a readjustment of all the polyrhythmic gears, even though they're playing multiple uh, rhythms and stuff. And it brought, let's just say, the pop listener ear into 4-4 to kind of get it ready for something. You know, I've said this before on, on, a, on a tool video that uh, Danny Carey did. Um, uh, Danny Carey, sorry. And um, to kind of retune, kind of cleanse the rhythmical palette before the next, you know, adventure. Anyhow, so I'm not going to say anything for the rest of this. I'm sure most of you have already split anyhow, but hey, I don't care. Here we go. So cool! Look at these guys—the trumpet players putting his, you know, the, his trumpet down. He's going, oh, Jesus. "This is a piece of work!" Oh my goodness! No wonder they're killing it. 24 million views as of me doing this. So there's reason for that. Let me stop this. Oh yes, celebrate him! Celebrating everybody, percussionist, you two. Just can't say enough about the everybody as a whole in this performance. Let me stop the video. Stand by. And then let me just hit stop here on this thing really quick. All right. Um,
incredible musicianship. Totally excited that, I mean, 24 million views, which means back in the days when my uncle's band was out, or in the 70s, or in the days of jazz fusion and, or Latin fusion or any kind of jazz fusion had a hard time breaking out because record labels were like, yeah, we have a department for that, but we're really focusing on the Trump big um, pop market big sales. You know, there were some great, you know, King Crimson, Weather Report, on and on and on and on and on. And, um, but to see this, what I love about this is, as an old decomposer is the fact that 24 million you that's what YouTube and technology has done for music as much as it's destroyed the business model of music it has expanded the 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 possibilities of people finding music and we don't want to get into a music business argument about that but the fact that the world is so much more willing wanting to be loaded with wonderful music this is a great example of it and so uh, Snarky Puppy, Lingus, um, I'm going to learn a little bit of, about the band and their band names for the next time, uh, the members' names, and the next time I do this, I can be a little more respectful instead of saying that guy, this guy, this guy, that guy. Anyhow, if you're still here, I'm totally amazed. Uh, nonetheless, um, Snarky Puppy, Lingus, everybody in there is just epic keyboard player. Oh, my God. Um, that's it. All right. <laughs> Oi. Oyster on the half lung. Sorry, guys. Um, got some more great stuff coming. Thanks for hanging out. All right. See ya.